In this video, I'm gonna go over six tips to increase productivity as a software engineer. So whether you're a new grad who is attempting to break into tech or you're an experienced developer, I'm sure there are some very useful tips for you in this video. Over the years, I've worked at a startup, a mid-sized company, and now I'm currently working at Google. And these are just some of the things that I've gathered over the years. The first tip is to have separate groupings of tabs for different projects that you're working on. So for example, if you have project A and project B, tabs relating to project A will be grouped together and tabs relating to project B will be grouped together separately. If there's a tab that relates to multiple projects, open the same tab in both sections. I know this might kind of seem like a dumb tip, but I'm telling you it has helped me with my productivity so much because I don't have to sift through a million tabs anymore because I have separate windows for each grouping of tabs. You can think of this like the table of contents in a book. You're told the starting page of each chapter. With this tip, you're told the starting tab of each project. My next tip is to time block working on specific projects. So for example, if I had project Project A and Project B, you can alternate days between working on A or B, or you could potentially alternate weekly. I've personally found that context switching between unrelated tasks can be a huge productivity killer. In fact, a study found that context switching takes on average 23 minutes and 15 seconds to have full cognitive focus on an original task after the context switching. And that's why, in my opinion, Dedicating full days for specific projects is the best use of your time. Let's say you have person A and person B, and each person has four projects to work on for one week. And for a nice and easy number, each time they context switch, let's say it costs them 20 minutes. So person A switches between each project every two hours. Eight hours divided by two hours is four times 20 minutes equals one hour and 20 minutes wasted per day times five days. That's six hours and 40 minutes wasted per week. So this is almost a full working day of wasted time due to context switching. Now person B, they are switching daily from project to project. So we do 20 minutes times five. That's an hour and 40 minutes wasted per week. So essentially that's five hours of time saved between person A and person B. My next tip is to have dedicated time every day where you do not accept any meetings or respond to lower priority chat messages. So choose a time when you feel most productive and automatically decline any new meetings during that time. You should use this time to work on your most complicated problems, the ones that are gonna take the most brain power. You should have absolutely no interruptions. So if you can focus by music or podcasts, pop headphones in and only focus on the task at hand. Don't worry about emails or chat messages or anything else. I believe you should have this dedicated focus time for at least two hours every day. Obviously it can't be all day because you still have to be available for your team and whatnot. You know, you can't just not respond to anyone all the time. I personally have focus time between 10 a.m. and noon most days. On Fridays, I actually have it for even longer. Google has an internal tool where you can see how many code changes you have made and on average, what your most productive day of the week is. I have my longest focus time on Fridays. And as it turns out, according to this internal tool, Friday is my most productive day. This is definitely not a coincidence. My next tip is to try to schedule meetings back to back. I know not everyone will agree with this, but this has really helped me increase velocity on my work. I personally find it frustrating if I have two or three meetings in a day, but they're all spaced out in two hour intervals. And this kind of goes back to the whole context switching thing. So whether you're coding, writing documents, reading documentation, responding to chat and emails, it's really hard to stay focused when you're being interrupted, having to prepare for a meeting. Think about it like this, 15 minutes before your meeting, you're gonna be thinking about the meeting. Maybe you have to talk, maybe you have to take notes. You're gonna be dedicating mental energy before the actual meeting 
which isn't an eruption. And then after the meeting is over, you now have to spend extra time to try to remember what you were doing, what problem you were trying to solve. This may not sound like a huge time sink, but when you do this two, three, four times a day, the time really adds up. If you have control over your meeting schedule, have meetings back to back, which will definitely reduce the pre and post meeting interruption time so that you can do actual work. My next tip is to have a personal task board. So this is a place where you can write out one-off tasks that are only visible to you. This is not visible to your manager or anyone on your team. The purpose of this board is to really just do a brain dump of all the tasks that you have to accomplish. So an example could be responding to an email or reviewing a teammate's pull request. These are things that don't really belong on a JIRA board necessarily. This is a list that is just there to help clear your head. At any given time, I usually have between 10 to 15 tasks on my personal board for work, and I will add things even if they're super small tasks, tasks that only take five minutes. My next tip is to try to get your email inbox to zero every day. The first thing I do every work morning before doing anything else is I go through every email. And Mondays are usually the worst because they built up over the weekend. As you're going through each email, you can use your personal task board to create small one-off tasks like responding to one or more or other tasks that the email reminded you of. From my experience, doing this religiously every day will reduce stress and give you an idea of everything you need to tackle for the day. Productivity is very important, and I hope that you can apply some of these tips to your job. If you got some value out of this video, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to grow my channel a lot more this year. Also, check out my website, algoswithmichael.com, and if you sign up for the newsletter, you can get access to completely free lessons relating to the sliding window algorithm. So if you're preparing for coding interviews, these lessons will be very helpful. That is all I have for you guys today. Catch you next time.